Chancellor of the Third Judicial District, now a Court of Appeals Judge Thomas R. Frierson, aka Skip, with us. He's gonna say a word here in a minute. And let's see, we got Paige Day, who is our uh, child support referee. We got Jim Jenkins, sitting president of Tennessee 4-H. I guess I should recognize him. And his mother. And we got Judge Boniface, Judge Phillips, Clerk and Master Brent Price, Assistant Clerk and Master Spencer Pearson. We got a whole bunch of poor folks here today. Uh, National Adoption Day is just a day that's set aside nationally to celebrate adoptions and the fact that uh, children who don't have a home get a home and parents who don't have a child get a child and uh, put a family together and it's always a happy occasion I always very much enjoy doing adoptions in the morning because people usually if they shed tears they're tears of joy and then I do my regular docket and everybody leaves with other kinds of tears in their eyes, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, without further ado, I think I have done my introduction. So uh, Judge Frierson has come to speak to us, so you come on up and, and uh, we're going to let him talk first and then we'll see Brad. Brad and DJ got a little song they're going to sing for us. We've never done a song before, but uh, if this works out, Brad, you may have to make this an annual occurrence. So, uh, Judge Fryer. May it please the court, and judges of the third judicial district, and our honored guests, good afternoon. It's really good to be here, and I so. Thank you for the invitation. It's a privilege and a pleasure for me to be back here uh, in Rogersville and in the Third Judicial District. And it is uh, certainly an honor for me to, to participate in this very special day, National Adoption Day. As you may know, this is a nationwide collaborative effort bringing many agencies, many uh, families, forever families together on this special uh, weekend, right before Thanksgiving. It's an initiative that really heightens the awareness of about 120,000 children and young people in foster care across our country. And uh, it also marks a time when nearly 75,000 children have been uh, transitioned from foster care to forever loving families during National Adoption Day ceremonies. Uh, you may know that uh, here in the Third Judicial District, our first National Adoption Day celebration was in 2003. And I had the privilege of residing then. And over the course of the next nine years, when we celebrated National Adoption Day, we had 80, we celebrated 83 adoptions uh, just on those National Adoption Days. During National Adoption Day in 2007, President George W. Bush had these remarks, nothing is more vital to this country's future than helping young people find love, stability, and support in families. And that, that reminds me of a story of some very special stones, which I feel is most appropriate for today. There was a group of nomads, and they were preparing to make a long journey. And before they left, a very wise person uh, came and addressed them. And they asked this uh, wise sage, do you have any special words of advice and wisdom for us? And she said this, yes, before you leave, Go and pick up as many of these special stones that you see, put them in your saddlebags, and you keep them there through the full course of your trip. And once you get there, you will find that you are both glad and sad. Well, this was a curious instruction, and some were thinking, we thought we were going to get information on uh, how to be wealthy and famous and 
and uh, all those kinds of things. But some did go and pick up some of the special stones, put them in their saddlebags, and they traveled a long distance. And when they arrived at their destination, they opened the saddlebags and they found that those stones had been polished during the course of their trip. They were now very, very valuable diamonds. And they remembered the words of that wise sage, and they thought, we're glad we picked up some of those stones, and we're sad that we didn't pick up more. Well, there's some humor there, but there's also uh, some very seriousness there. For us today, we recognize that uh, each day we have precious opportunities to make a very positive and a very powerful difference in the lives of children. Children just like these beautiful children here today. Children with dreams to grasp and hope, to grip and love to share. For example, several years ago, a former foster care youth in Tennessee had this to say, I want what everyone wants, a family of my own. I want a dad to walk me down the aisle. I want a home to come to for the holidays, and I want grandparents for my children. Of course, the journey of good parenting is not an easy one. Some days, as we know, are going to be longer than others, but the trek is a fleeting one. One source suggests that parents have approximately 936 <coughs> weeks from the day a child is born until she or he graduates from high school. And so by the fifth grade, yes, the fifth grade, that child will see high school graduation in about 364 weeks. And as parents, what we do this week and every single week matters greatly in the lives of our children. On a personal note, my wife Jane and I have been blessed with three children through adoption. We remember their uh, early years with fondness. They're grown up now. Uh, and I recall at the time a good friend saying, you know, Skip, always remember that when your children are young, the days are long, but the years are short. And that's profoundly true. We can find it to be very, very true. But how rich the rewards when compassionate parents plant the seeds of love, pour in the nourishing flow of care, and spread the warm light of hope into the heart of a child. Soon, one day, a family is thankful for a bountiful harvest of love and stability and support. And so I believe and I submit that it's most apropos that we celebrate National Adoption Day during the season of Thanksgiving. Because in our community and communities all across America, adoptive families are going to experience a full, overflowing cornucopia of blessings. Thankful children will embrace a forever family that they once believed would only be a dream. Thank the parents and grandparents will be joined together with children that they you have so long awaited. In grateful communities and states and our great nation will be forever together <coughs> because of all of this. Thank you for being here today. We wish for each and every one of you all the very best in your forever families. And God's pity. Thank you, Judge. One, two, three.
say a few words, and then uh, Judge Phillips is going to get his rope on and do these two adoptions for us real quickly. So, uh, Judge Phillips, you go ahead, Fred. I really had no idea um, exactly what I was supposed to do today, so uh, I've never really gave a speech in public before outside of when I was in school. So I'll do the very best I can today. And, um, Jessica and I together kind of put together some notes about our story and I'll just share it with you. So my name is Brad Price and this is my wife Jessica Winstead Price. And we're lifelong residents here in Hawkins County. And growing up in Rogersville and Sabornville and attending school together, much like Tia said, uh, we became friends early on while attending Cherokee High School. We began dating a few years after graduation and were married in December of 2007. And little did we know then just where life was getting ready to take us. We began our little two-person family with a lot of hopes and dreams of one day raising a family of our own right here in the same place that we grew up. A few years into our marriage, I came home to the news that Jessica was pregnant. And all of a sudden, the dreams that we had always had were now becoming a reality. Excited and scared, we began planning as any couple would do. We were excited and thrilled. A lot of thoughts were racing through our minds, such as, will it be a boy or a girl? Names, colors of bedroom, furniture, doctor's appointments, and the list goes on. The anticipation for that first appointment with Dr. Baird was almost unbearable. Restless nights as we waited for the day to come. And the day did come and we met with Dr. Baird and all too quickly the excitement that we had been feeling was taken away and it was gone. Miscarriage was inevitable for us. The pain and hurt that is associated with that news is something that can't be understood until you face it. Unfortunately for us, we've experienced that pain many times now. After a few years of prayer and seeking God's will for us to have a family, Jessica came to me about adoption. Early on in my father and mother-in-law's marriage, they faced a similar situation as Jessica and I. And they adopted a little boy, and his name's Josh. Soon after Josh's adoption, Gerald and Carolyn had two daughters, Jessica and Jennifer. She explained how all that took place and that the love that they shared <coughs> as a family wasn't based on being biologically related, but it was the love their family had for Josh and the love that Josh has for them that made them a family. Jessica explained it in a way that it had always been a desire of hers to adopt a child. She explained how it had been such a blessing to her family to have Josh, and that she hoped that she could follow in her parents' footsteps and give a child a home someday. If I'm honest, as soon as she mentioned it, my heart began racing, and I'll admit there was a lot for me to learn. But we wanted a child so bad that I honestly was willing to do anything to feel that void in her life. We began research and adoption both here in the U.S. and abroad, and we quickly learned that no matter which direction we chose, there was going to be challenges to face. Jessica's mom told us about Pam Mayo and how she assisted them with adopting Josh, so we did some research and talked to her. She explained to us the process, but that it would be good for us to talk to others in the community that had gone through classes and had adopted and get their first-hand testimonies from them. We met with Dean Newman, the director of the Hawkins County Foster Parents Association, and was told that she could really go over all the ins and outs of pursuing fostering to adopt through the Department of Children's Services. Dean was a godsend to us and a blessing. Hawkins County is truly blessed to have such a wonderful lady leading this organization. She's an advocate and an all-out warrior for children in this community. Following our meeting with Dean, we registered for classes with DCS and our journey to adopt a child began. We went through all the requirements set forth by the department, and we were approved as a home for children and did every class that was scheduled. And after months of waiting for approval, we were finally ready. 
Now we were made aware that the likelihood of actually getting the baby at that time was really challenging. So we set our hearts on just finding a child, any child, any sex, any race, that needed us as much as we needed them. We waited for almost a month and the call came that a little eight month old boy was at the department and needed a home as his future was very uncertain and it was getting late in the evening and he needed us. We didn't have but just a short time to get our thoughts together and with a simple prayer to God and putting our trust in him, we agreed and we were told that this little boy would be at our house in two hours. Things got real and real fast. <laughs> Family and friends were contacted and the excitement that was in our home was busting at the seams. I don't th think we personally had to go out and buy the first thing for that little boy because our family and our church family and friends just started bringing in more stuff than we knew what to do with. At 7.30 a silver SUV pulled in our driveway and here he come. I watched as they put this little boy named DJ in the arms of my wife. And then in a few more moments, he was in mine. And my life changed forever. I never felt anything like that. This little boy was going to be dependent upon me. And his life was my responsibility. And all I could do was just look at him and cry. Now, before we had time to get adjusted to this baby in our house, the sleep schedule, changing diapers, making bottles, and all that comes with a baby. We got a call that another little boy had been born in a local hospital. And following an evaluation and proper paperwork with the department, he was going to be immediately adoptable. And we could apply to be his forever home. Needless to say, we called the next morning and asked how we could possibly be considered for this little fella. My heart sank when I was told 26 other families had already called that morning and applied. In our hearts, we knew this was a long shot and at best, we would just have to hope and pray. Two weeks later, while I worked at Christian Sales Funeral Home, my phone rang from a strange number and I just assumed it was a spam call. So I quietly answered and could not believe what I heard on the other line. Mr. Price, we received a request from you on a little boy who is going to be adoptable very soon and we'd like to know if you're ready to meet with us and proceed with him being placed with you and Jessica. That's probably the loudest that anybody has ever yelled in a funeral home. I can remember I was jumping up and down and completely had forgot where I was at. I called Jessica and I couldn't help but just scream the news to her in excitement. We were in disbelief, but a few weeks later, an eight week old Gerald Thomas would come to our home. Life was great, he was perfect. He only weighed a little over seven pounds at eight weeks old. And looking at him now, you would never believe that he was so little. Fast forward a couple months, we received another call on a Friday afternoon from the Department of Children's Services. And the voice on the other line said, Mr. Price, we know you already have two little boys, DJ and Gerald Thomas. And I said, yes. But Mr. Price, there's a little two-month-old boy named Ryan who needs a safe place to stay due to some extenuating circumstances. And we were hoping that you would consider taking him into your home. Remember how I said life got real? Well, it got real, real fast again. We went from no kids to three kids in five months, and all three were under 12 months old. And this included diapers and bottles and everything else. What were we going to do? We were told the thing that was hindering us was that we didn't own a vehicle that all three of them could fit in, so we had to go and trade vehicles the next morning. We got home that evening to three infants that needed to be put to bed. Sleep was not an option. <clears throat> not that night, nor many more to come. So needless to say, we have had to have help along the way to raise these three boys. These boys have been surrounded by love from every angle, from family to friends. After a lot of prayer and a lot of God's direction, all three of these boys were adopted right in this very same room with countless members of our family and a host of friends by our side. The road to adoption hasn't always been easy. It comes with a lot of concerns and a lot of unknowns. But we'd do it all over again for those three little boys. I'd be amiss to try to name everyone that went out of their way to help us. 
but there's two individuals that I feel like I'm, that deserve to be mentioned. I'd like to thank Attorney Daniel Bullock for all he did for us and that he continues to do for our family. He's became more than just a family attorney. He's became a friend and a very important man in my children's lives. I'd also like to thank Mr. Graham Warner, who was my boss and supervisor the whole time we were going through this. It can take months and even years to get everything finalized. And while I was working that first year, I missed 47 days of work to be at court. He never made me take a sick day or a vacation day. He was by our side 100% of the way. Brent passed away last year and right up until his death, he was still calling every week to check on our kids. I told you all this to tell you that adoption is a beautiful thing. I don't know everyone here and I don't know your spiritual beliefs, but this one thing I can tell you, God does all things well for you. <laughs> Scripture teaches us that we are loved by our Heavenly Father, and when we accept His Son's sacrifice on the cross for the remission of our sins, we were not born into righteousness, but through His love we can be become a part of Him, and through His love we are called His children. In Romans 8, 15, it states, you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby you can cry, Abba, Father. Blood may mean you're related, but love is what makes you family. And there's no greater love than the Heavenly Father who has claimed us as His own. Adoption is a very important part of our family. I'm honored that Chancellor Jenkins has asked us to come today and share this. We're often asked how it came to be that we have three sons all the same age and it's a story that we're always willing to share. Just recently, my sister and her husband, Megan and Trevor Barnett, adopted a beautiful baby girl, Eva Dale Barnett. Last year, my cousin and one of my closest friends, Angela and Michael Barnwell, were at least to adopt two beautiful girls, Olivia and Alyssa. So not only do we have our sons, but we have an adopted niece, two adopted cousins, and Jessica has an adopted brother. Adopting these three boys has been the best thing that's ever happened to our family. I've always loved Jessica, but when I married her, I didn't really understand what love was until I saw her become a mom, and I became a dad. To this day, Jessica glows as a mother. I know now what my parents meant when they would say, one day when you got a child of your own, son, you're going to understand. Dad, I understand that. Today, our kids are eight, eight and nine. All in third grade play for the youth Falcon football team and up for basketball. They're active in the church, Spires Chapel, and love on campus. We're so proud of all three of them. DJ, you help Thomas and Ryan do the best thing that's ever happened to me and you, Mom. And we love you. Nothing's going to ever change that. And to those of you here today that's been adopted or are here to adopt a child, cherish this, celebrate it. Let this be a day of great importance for the rest of your lives. There's nothing more precious than the love of a child and what that does for your family. Those that have been adopted, don't ever be ashamed of that. Always remember you, you were the wish, the dream, and the prayer that came true. You're all that matters to your family, and you're our very reason for living. You're a miracle, and this day is about you, and how wonderfully important you are. God bless everyone here. Congratulations to each of you that are going to be adopted, and thank you again for this opportunity.
able to get a lot of this together. I appreciate all of you for what we're doing. But I'll let Mr. Boyd, Judge Boyd, say a word here and then we'll get on with the program. I really wasn't anticipating having to say anything, so I did put on the spot. But um, and doing the juvenile court stuff that, and seeing the issues that we see day in and day out through juvenile court, days like today make the job worth it. Uh, seeing young people and, and, and children become parts of families that are going to love them and show them what it means to be loved. Uh, a lot of times we don't see that. But uh, Brad and Jessica, thank you all. I love you. It's an honor to give you a family. And I appreciate you for including me. Uh, that's what, what makes the job worth it. Sometimes we see a whole lot of stuff I don't want to say, but we, uh, this, Today's like the day. Uh, it makes the, the ends justify the means a lot of times, and that's that's what uh, that's what today's about. So congratulations to everyone, and especially the children that will get to show them what it means to be loved. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I meant to say this to me, but I didn't say goodbye, but. You know, Brad did a pretty good job singing, but if anybody's ever heard Jessica sing, <laughs> she can actually sing better than Brad. Brad, I'm not down on you, but no, you can That's all right. All right, Lauren, you come on up here and bring your folks. And I guess it goes without saying, you wave confidentiality. I'm okay. <laughs> All right.
option. Um, I'm going to say the related option. So, of course, we have Jamie live on for the mobile corrections, and you are here for the adoption of both Braylon and the correct? And I'll start with um, some questions asked to Matea for both of you. You are related to Matea, correct? Yes. Yes. And the mother signed off volunteering and then agreeing with the with the adoption on this case, correct? Yes. And father's rights have been terminated correctly, correct? Okay. And the two of you are able to provide for Matea financially, emotionally, correct? Yes. And you understand that you are mom and dad to 18 and beyond, and you are willing to take on that task. Yes. That it's not um, reversible. That um, as of today, they have not even work, That it is as if the day has been lost. Yes. Alright, so that's the case. Very well. Now, as, as to Brandon. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You've got a brand new, again, a brand new family. <laughs> Thank you. 